The group, Alliance for Automotive Innovation, argued that the federal government, not states, should control who gets access to cars' telematic systems. Hot take. I think that you should control who gets access to that because you bought the fucking car. It's your car. It's your data. You bought it. You own it. If your car is going to collect data on you, you should get to choose who has access to that data, whether it's you, your uncle, your cousin Bob, the mechanic down the street, or the dealer. But that's just me. Hey, everybody. How's it going? I hope you're all having a lovely day. I switched over to using coconut oil for my morning eggs when I am just preparing them. And I had gotten back into this bad habit of using a no-stick pot. But I just got myself a cast iron one again. And I really didn't remember what the difference was until I had the experience of using a cast iron skillet combined with coconut oil instead of canola oil. It is a night and day difference in the quality of my breakfast. This is not sponsored. There's no links down below to where you can buy any of this shit. Um, I'm not sponsored by Big Coconut or <laughs> Big <laughs> or Cast Iron or whatever, but it's fucking good. And I highly suggest that you give it a shot if you are using some sort of no-stick pan. Now, to be clear, it's a bit more of a pain in the ass to flip your eggs in the morning. It's not as easy to prepare your breakfast otherwise, but the taste is worth it. So today, what I'd like to discuss is an article that many of you have been linking to me about the right to repair ballot initiative in Massachusetts regarding automotive uh, issues. So this says, a fight over the right to repair cars turns ugly. In the wake of a voter-approved law, Subaru and Kia dealers in Massachusetts have disabled systems that allow remote starts and send maintenance alerts. So this is about the right to repair ballot initiative. The absolute TLDR of that is that independent mechanics were fearful that they would no longer be able to work on your car anymore. So a bill was passed in 2012, ensuring that they have the ability to do so. Nowadays, a lot of what's happening in your car happens wirelessly. And the fear was that since there was a loophole in the 2012 bill that would not allow you access to anything that's done wirelessly, if diagnostics and repair information is transmitted wirelessly, that your independent mechanics mechanic would be locked out. So this was passed in order to ensure that your mechanic would be able to get access to that information that's stored in your vehicle so that they would be able to do their job. Now, this passed in a landslide. It was about 75% to 25% in November of 2020. So this is the story. Chief Ferelli loved her Subaru SUV, which she bought in 2020 because it made her feel safe. So when it was time for her husband, Mark, to purchase his own new car last summer, they returned to the Subaru dealer near their home in southeast Massachusetts. But there was a catch, one that made the couple mad. Mark's sedan wouldn't have access to the company's telematic system and the app that went along with it. No remote engine start in the freezing New England weather, no emergency assistance, no automated messages when tire pressure was low or the oil needed changing. The worst part was that if the Ferrellis lived just a mile away in Rhode Island, they would have the features. They bought the car, but thinking back, Mark says if I had known about the issue before stepping into the dealer, he probably would have went with Toyota. Subaru disabled a telematic system and associated features on new cars registered in Massachusetts last year as part of a spat over a right-to-repair measure approved overwhelmingly by the state's voters in 2020. The measure, which has been held up in the courts, required automakers to give car owners and independent mechanics more access to data about the car's internal systems. But the open data platform envisioned by the law doesn't exist yet, and automakers have filed suit to prevent the initiative from taking effect. So first, Subaru and then Kia turned off their telematic systems on their newest cars in Massachusetts, irking drivers like the Ferrellis. This was not to comply with the law. Compliance with the law at this time is impossible, but rather to avoid violating it. Dominic Infant, a spokesperson for Subaru, wrote in a statement. Kia did not respond to a request for comment. The dispute is the latest chapter in a long-running disagreement between the state and automakers over the right to repair or consumers' ability to fix their own cars and control who does it for them. In 2012, Massachusetts voters passed a similar ballot measure that for the first time required automakers to use non-proprietary onboard diagnostic ports on every vehicle. A year later, the initiative formed the basis of a nationwide agreement. Automakers guaranteed that car owners and mechanics would have access to the same kinds of tools, software, and information that they give their own franchise car dealers, which, in my opinion, is a good thing. It would really suck if you were forced to go to the dealer to get your car fixed. Almost everybody that I know that owns a vehicle has had an experience where they went to the dealer, they were told 1500 to 3000 bucks. they went to a shop down the road that fixed it for $200, and the car just continued working. It wasn't half-assed, it wasn't a crappy solution, they just fixed what was actually broken rather than replacing everything. Almost everybody has had this experience at some point in their life when dealing with a dealership. So it is important that others be able to work on the car. So for years, the right to repair movement has held up the automotive industry as the rare place where things were going right. 
Independent mechanics remain competitive. 70% of auto repairs happen in independent shops, according to the U.S. Trade Association that represents them. Backyard tinkerers abound. But new vehicles are now computers on wheels, gathering an estimated 25 gigabytes per hour of driving data. That's kind of weird. The equivalent of five HD movies. Automakers say that a lot of this innovation isn't useful to them and is discarded, but some, a vehicle's location, how specific components are operating at a given moment, is anonymized and sent to the manufacturers. Sensitive, personal identifying information like vehicle identification numbers are handled, automakers say, according to strict privacy principles. These days, much of the data is transmitted wirelessly. So independent mechanics and right-to-repair proponents worry that automakers will stop sending vital repair information to the diagnostic ports. That would hamper the independence and lock customers into relationships with dealerships. Independent mechanics fear that automakers could potentially block what they want when an independent repairer tries to access a car's technified guts. Glenn Wilder, the owner of an auto and tire repair shop in the skit, skit to something Massachusetts told automakers in 2020. The fight could have national implications for not only the automotive industry, but any gadget that transmits data to its manufacturer after a customer has paid money and walked away from the sales desk. I think of it as right to repair 2.0, says Kyle Weans, a longtime right to repair advocate and the founder of iFixit, a website that offers tools and repair guides. The auto world is farther along than the rest of the world is, Weans said. Independents already have access to information and parts. Now they're talking about data streams, but that doesn't make the fight any less important. Automakers say opening the car's mechanical data to anyone would be dangerous and a violation of federal law. In November 2020, just after voters approved the ballot measure, a trade group that represents most major automakers sued Massachusetts in federal court. The group, Alliance for Automotive Innovation, argued that the federal government, not state, should control who gets access to cars' telematic systems. Hot take. I think that you should control who gets access to that because you bought the fucking car. It's your car. It's your data. You bought it. You own it. If your car is going to collect data on you, you should get to choose who has access to that data. Whether it's you, your uncle, your cousin Bob, the mechanic down the street, or the dealer. But that's just me. The group also said that it would be irresponsible and dangerous to create the open data platform that the law required, especially by 2022. The Massachusetts Right to Repair Committee, representing more than 1,600 Massachusetts repair shops, says the automakers had ample time to prepare. Now, to be clear here, this is a criticism that I actually do understand. I have spoken to other people who said, listen, when this ballot initiative was proposed, maybe it would have been better if they gave a couple more years to comply. I don't know what it's like to create an open data platform. To be clear, this is not an area of expertise or experience on my part part. But having the deadline for that be 2022 on a bill that you didn't even know would be pushed into law until winter of 2020, that really isn't giving them a lot of time to comply. And it is giving them an excuse to weasel out of doing such a thing. I do think requiring that open data platform by a later date is something that would have been fair. Again, we're talking about the potential to have all the repair related information done wirelessly into the future. So if this is a bill that is talking about the hypothetical future, I think that having a date a little bit further out into the future would have been a decent compromise in order to get manufacturers a little bit more on board. To be clear, they never would have been fully on board. God forbid anybody but the dealer can fix your car. But I do think putting this out into the future, 2024, 2025, would have made it seem a little bit reasonable. This is not like what we're asking for with consumer electronics right to repair, where we're saying, hey, you have a PDF on your server with the schematic, would you mind selling it to us? Or, hey, you have a network for selling these chips and these parts, would you mind telling that vendor that they're allowed to sell chips to us? We're talking about creating an entirely new open data platform, which is something that I I think giving them about a year to comply is a little bit cutting it close to the, cut it to the wire. Josh Siegel, an assistant professor of engineering at Michigan State University who studies car connected security, says the automakers might be right and the system envisioned by law may not be technically doable. Siegel says the ballot measure may have been well intentioned, but it wasn't written with a full understanding of the complexity of automotive telematic systems. Those systems give access not just to data about what's broken and why, but also to the driver assistance systems that enable emergency braking and elements of the drive by wire system that helps drivers drive their car. Asking the automakers to put together a safe and open telematic system in just a few months wasn't realistic, Siegel says. I think that they could create a platform that would meet some of the requirements of what the legislation is calling for, he says, but I wouldn't want it in my own car. The idea I imagine he's getting at is if they only have one year to develop this and it has to be done very quickly, that he wouldn't trust that it's going to be done properly versus if it was done later. The Alliance for Automotive Innovation declined to comment, citing the lawsuit, but in a 2020 hearing, a representative for the group argued that independent repair shops wanted access to car data, not just to make repairs, but also to advertise and sell to customers. 
So what they're saying there is that they don't want access to your car's telematic system because they actually want to be able to fix it. They want access to it so that they can advertise to you. That's a low blow. That's a serious low blow, and I think that that requires a citation. I think that that requires a list of citations and proof. This sounds like the same type of fear, uncertainty, and doubt that's used when we talk about right to repair, and a lobbyist like Charlie Brown of CTA will say that we're going to install TikTok on people's phones. I don't think that your independent mechanic is really interested on putting pop-up ads in your fucking car. I think he wants to be able to fix it, get a good review from you, take your money, and have you be on your way so that you can tell everybody else what a great job they did fixing your car. I sincerely doubt that independent mechanics are looking to install spyware on your car, that they're looking to advertise to you by installing some sort of pop-up system in there that's going to remind you every one, one week that you should go by there to have some other service done. That seems like a serious low blow, but I'm curious what you all think. Dealerships are also caught in the middle. It's an especially unfortunate time to be there given the chip shortage that has curtailed vehicle production and sales. Shame on manufacturers for not stepping up and being part of the conversation, says Bob O. Konwiski, Executive Vice President of the Massachusetts State Automobile Dealers Association. But he's angry at the independent repair industry too, accusing it of a money grab. They're asking for the ability to continue fixing cars. Why is it a money grab? When an independent mechanic wants to provide you a better service, faster and cheaper than a dealer, but it is not a money grab when the manufacturers go out of their way to try to stop them from doing that. His group has written a pair of bills currently under consideration in the Massachusetts legislature that would give automakers until 2025 to comply with the open data platform law. For Siegel, the controversy points to a bigger and woolier question about whether consumers understand just how much data is flowing from their vehicles and where it goes. There's money to be made from a car's GPS location, temperature data, biometric info, and data on key parts. A few years ago, Siegel and his colleagues estimated that the U.S. connected car data market could be worth up to $92 billion, with everyone from manufacturers and part suppliers to dealers to insurers racing for a share. The most important thing is to show people that own breadcrumbs, Siegel says. From Mark Ferrelli, this Massachusetts Subaru owner, the lesson is clear. Sucks to be us, he said. Just before he bought the car, he says, the dealer asked him, don't you have any friends in Rhode Island whose address you can use? I think that this really hits home. A lot of my comments have asked the question not of whether or not it is secure for this data to be transmitted or whether it is bad to the mechanic have it, but they've asked what I find to be the more important question. Why is my car collecting all this shit? Honest question. Because again, if you have a you know, 1974 Pontiac, if you have a 1996 Ford F-150, your car did not need to collect 25 gigabytes of data per hour in order for you to go from point A to point B. I'm not trying to be a Luddite here. I'm, I'm really not trying to be a Luddite. It's just, you know, I understand the point of certain information. I understand the point of it knowing where it is that I am so that it could give me the little pop-up on the screen that tells me what the speed limit is in that area. That is useful. I understand the point of the car knowing how far I am from the car that is in front of me so that it can go beep, 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 beep when it thinks that I'm about to collide into it. This stuff makes sense. But collecting 25 gigabytes an hour of data on me, parsing through it and sending it to the manufacturer and then calling that a $92 billion industry, I don't like that. I don't like the, it's just, wow. Why is there a $92 billion industry in the information that is collected by my vehicle? And further, why are they arguing that it is not up to states but the federal government to decide who gets access to your data? You should have access to your data. You. You bought the car. You spent twenty or forty or eighty thousand dollars on this vehicle. You have paid for something that's collecting data on you. I think you should have access to the data that your purchase is collecting on you. Now, I am really interested to hear what more automotive engineers think about this entire situation. I have reached out to one several weeks ago who is really, really well qualified in this. Unfortunately, he's not able to speak publicly in an interview without clearing it with his employer. I've asked him to go about doing that, and I've also created a framework of questions that I believe are phrased in a friendly manner to try and facilitate that happening. I don't want this channel to turn into a complete matter echo chamber. I have my thoughts, I have my philosophies, but at the end of the day, I don't, I'm not an automotive engineer. I don't build cars. Up until last year, I couldn't even drive one. So there, I'm, there's most certainly a blind spot that I have when discussing these issues. I discuss them from my perspective, but I'd really love to know the manufacturer's perspective past what you hear in PR statements. And I am more than happy to have them on to speak about this because maybe I would learn something as well as you all learning something that you didn't know before about all of this. And I think it's important to have more people involved in this conversation than simply me just screaming at a cloud. 
I like screaming at clouds. I've spent 10 years on this channel screaming at clouds, and I will continue to scream at clouds because, I don't know, it's a, it's a good outlet. But at the end of the day, I really would like to get to the bottom of all of this and try to come up with a solution that works for everybody. So hopefully I'm able to have them on. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. See you all in the next video. Bye now.